They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Okay guys, I know that we've gotten a lot of DMs saying, hey Mason, man, I truly appreciate the videos that you make every single day. I just don't have the money to support you on Patreon, but I wanna let you know I appreciate it. And my response to that is always, no man, thank you so much for reaching out. I'm glad you like the videos, I'm glad you watch them. You support the channel just by dropping likes, leaving comments, and coming out to these premieres regularly. But here is something y'all can do to really, really, really support the channel. Now y'all know that y'all haven't heard a single ad from me all season now, and you pretty much hear every other channel, they're just pumping ads. I mean, talk about how many Manscaped ads can you possibly hear? But this is the one that they're gonna do. And if y'all use this, I promise you I'll be eternally grateful. So right now, what we actually have going on is at Thrive Fantasy for Major League Opening Day, which is today if you aren't paying attention, they're doing a promo that they're giving people that sign up with the promo code flock a free one thousand dollar free roll so please guys go down to the comment section of the video go to the description of the video use promo code flock make like a 10 20 15 20 deposit whatever you want to do and they're just begging people to sign up to this site right now they just need their numbers up so they are going to be giving you not only the free one thousand dollar free roll in that flock contest but to go along with this what they're gonna do is they're gonna match whatever money you put in. I think it's up to like 50 bucks. I wouldn't even put in 50 bucks, by the way. But it helps the channel and they're giving away free money just for the hell of it because they need people to sign up right now. So please guys, if y'all wanna help out, that is how you can do so. But anyway, let's get into this video and I'm just gonna be going through some fantasy basketball updates. No need to do any type of introduction. First player we're gonna be talking about is going to be Kevin Durant. And I know KD is someone that I said we wanted to buy about a week ago, I, I, probably even a little bit longer. I thought Kevin Durant would be back by now, but I also thought that the Nets wouldn't be close to being this good. I mean, they are tied for number one in the East. Kevin Durant has missed the majority of the year. I mean, Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving have played very few minutes together. It's almost laughable how good this team is going to be when they are all healthy and all together. I mean, at this point, I said this, I believe, two weeks ago, you have to say that the Brooklyn Nets are by far and away the favorites for the NBA title. So Kevin Durant coming back next week is going to be very exciting. And like I've been saying, is when Kevin Durant comes back, I don't necessarily think that they're going to have him on some massive minute restriction, some massive restriction in not playing back-to-backs because this team has not played together. I think they need to figure out the defensive sets. They also have players like LaMarcus Aldridge, Blake Griffin coming in. They need to figure out what they're going to do. And because they have those title aspirations, they're not just going to be waiting to the NBA playoffs to do so. So I think what they're probably doing right now is going, hey, we're number one in the East. We have no worries at all about even dropping a few slots. Let's just make sure KD has all the time on the planet to come back. Make sure he's going to be 100% healthy. We know that you have the Kevin Durant drama going on with his DMs at the same time. So maybe he is healthy and they're just wanting to hide him away and try to get his name out of the news. But whatever the reason is, I think when KD actually comes back, he is going to be playing more minutes and more games than most people expect. He is going to be playing in quite possibly one of the best NBA offenses we have ever seen. So I think now is the time to trade for Kevin Durant. A lot of people are viewing him as an asset that we don't know when he's going to be back on the court. We don't know how many minutes he's going to be playing. And I think that you should be viewing him as an elite player that is currently injured that you should be getting back in about seven to eight days. Okay, so now let's go over to a recent update that we have with Anthony Davis where their head coach came out and said, hey, he's made good progress, but he's still a ways away. And we go to the last update as well. And that was March 15th when they said that he only had three weeks out. So you do the quick math here and you go, okay, so is he coming back next week? But no, that's probably not gonna be the case because the Lakers, just like Kevin Durant, have surprisingly been able to have a decent stretch with no Anthony Davis, no LeBron James. I thought that this team was gonna be just complete garbage. I thought they were gonna be Minnesota Timberwolves level bad. But over the past 10 games, they are six and four. They won two games in a row and they're currently sitting at 30 and 17. So I know some other mainstream fantasy basketball, some other just mainstream NBA podcasts have been talking about possibly the Lakers falling to being a play-in team if they miss LeBron and Anthony Davis as long as most people are expecting. 
but it looks like they're not on that path. And because they're not on that path, sadly, I think that Anthony Davis is probably going to be out for another two to three weeks. Then you go over to LeBron James, and it looks like LeBron is also going to be out just, say, three to five more weeks. So here, that is going to have some implications for this Los Angeles Lakers roster. Now, Andre Drummond is making his debut tonight. So obviously, if you're watching this in the premiere right now, we can talk about what Andre Drummond did, but I'm not going to stay up all night to see this one game so we can include it in the video. But Andre Drummond coming in is going to make a difference in that this team has been very shallow in the amount of players that they've been playing. A lot of these guys have been seeing 37, 38 minutes a night. Andre Drummond coming in should immediately, in my opinion, probably see close to 25 minutes. So that's going to take the load off a lot of other players. Andre Drummond should almost immediately be someone that you can start in fantasy basketball. And if we go to some of these other players in this Lakers offense that maybe have been performing at a higher level with no Anthony Davis, with no LeBron James, first player we're going to have is Dennis Schroeder, who over the past 14 days has played seven games and he's averaging 20 points a game, four rebounds, six and a half assists, and two steals. Now, I answered a question about Dennis Schroeder in the premiere this morning, where I believe we were asked, hey, what is he going to be whenever you have LeBron coming back in? And the answer to that is nothing. When LeBron comes back in, LeBron is going to take full control of the offense. You're also going to have Anthony Davis back probably before LeBron. So Dennis Schroeder is going to go to being someone coming off the bench, being someone that provides a spark, maybe can run the offense for about 10 minutes a night just to make sure LeBron is getting adequate rest. But right now, pretty much the only time that you're going to be able to start him, I'd recommend keeping him for just say one more week for the production and then looking to see if you can just use him in a package to get an upgrade elsewhere. Now, a player that I would be looking to trade away right away is actually going to be Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma has been fantastic over the past two weeks. He's played seven games. He's up there at 35 minutes a night. He's made almost three three-point shots a night as well. 14 points a game, seven and a half rebounds, and four total assists. Now, I just think that these numbers across the board from minutes, field goal attempts, just say field goal efficiency, they're all going to come down with the addition of Andre Drummond with Anthony Davis coming back in. So because of that, I'm going to be looking to move Kuzma for what I can. I think Dennis Schroeder is obviously going to be a little bit less impacted by the addition of Andre Drummond, by the addition of Anthony Davis back to this rotation. But Kuzma is going to take a hit. Okay, so now let's go over to Chicago and let's talk about what has been happening since Nikola Vucevic has come into this rotation. And we've only seen two games, but they have not been that inspiring, to say the least. The two games with Nikola Vucevic, you've had him averaging 21 points a night, nine rebounds, and four and a half assists. And you compare this to what he was doing in Orlando, and it is a drop-off. I mean, he went from 25 points a night to 21, from 12 to nine assists, about the same. And I know, I understand, this is a very, very small sample. So you can't look at these numbers and go, okay, Vucevic is going to be way worse in Chicago than he was in Orlando. Lock it up right now. No, of course he was going to start slow. He's transitioning to a completely new team. What we need to do is we need to continue to track it and see if we eventually need to be making a massive change in the rankings. Now, another player in Chicago, someone that we've been asked a ton about in the live streams, a ton about in the premieres as of late, it's going to be Zach Levine who over the past two nights has averaged 30 minutes a game, 15 points, three and a half rebounds, and two and a half assists. And yes, he did suffer that ankle injury, so maybe he's just a little banged up. Maybe he's just getting back into the groove of things. But still, disappointing numbers from Zach Levine. You want more, you expected more. So maybe Vucevic is going to hurt him a little bit more than we thought, but it's only a two-game sample. So we're going to definitely revisit this situation and let's call it a week. Let's make sure that they get three or four more games under their belt and then we can compare what those numbers are then. Okay, so now the last team situation that I really want to talk about is going to be Philadelphia, who we know has been without Joel Embiid for a significant amount of time now. And surprisingly, they're still tied for first in the East. And we're sitting here going, okay, um, what is going on? Kevin Durant gone for a significant amount of time. The Nets still first in the East. 
Joel Embiid gone for a significant amount of time. The 76ers still tied for first in the East. LeBron and Anthony Davis gone for a significant amount of time. They've won six out of the last 10. They are still 30 and 17. So these teams are being able to hold on. I mean, I think if you're a fan of any one of these squads and you've seen these recent performances, you should be a lot more excited than you were. But anyway, Joel Embiid should be coming back in early April. So if there's any buy low window on Joel Embiid, I mean, you need to take advantage right now because he was the front runner for MVP before he got hurt. I mean, pretty much everybody thought it was going to be Embiid. You looked across the board. Obviously, he every single season has elite defensive statistics, but to go along with that, he really took a step up with his offensive game at the same time. Now, the trade window is probably closed on Embiid, probably not going to be able to get him, but can't hurt to try. And now, the next player we need to talk about is going to be Ben Simmons, who surprisingly took a significant step back without Joel Embiid. I mean, if you look at the past two weeks, Ben Simmons has only averaged 14 points a night. And I know that's been about what Ben Simmons has averaged all year. That's nothing too unfamiliar, but the efficiency is a lot worse. And this makes sense because Ben Simmons went from a player that was just kind of running the offense in transition to now being asked to do a little bit more in the half court with no Joel Embiid because Embiid was the focal point of this offense in their half court game before he went down. So Ben Simmons being asked to do that, he simply is not good at it. Obviously we understand his shooting difficulties to go along with this. I've been surprised that his rebounds, his assists aren't necessarily where you'd expect them to be either with them being down at seven rebounds a night and six assists. So I think Joel Embiid coming back may actually help Ben Simmons get back to where he was at the beginning of the year when you were just a little bit more excited about him across the board. Now let's go to a player that has actually really benefited with Joel Embiid missing time. And this is because he can command that half court offense. It's going to be Tobias Harris and Tobias Harris in the past two weeks has played seven games. And in these seven games, he's played 35 minutes a night. So obviously that's significant to go along with this 21 points a night, seven and a half rebounds and five assists. So when Joel Embiid comes back, I can promise you, you're most likely going to see the field goal attempts for Tobias Harris go down significantly. And yes, you could see a small bump up in efficiency. We always talk about this. When you remove a superstar from a rotation, the supported cast around that player probably will get an uptick in fantasy value just due to the fact that there are going to be more shots to be had. They're going to have more opportunity for assist. But to go along with this, we know the efficiency is going to go down because defenses don't have to key in on that superstar and these players begin to see less open looks. So Tobias Harris, he'll begin to see more open looks with Joel Embiid coming back, but he's going to be asked to simply do a lot less than he currently is. So if you're playing in a points league and Tobias Harris has been on straight up fire over the past two or three weeks now, I think this is when you look to sell him. If you wait until Joel Embiid is officially back in the rotation. I mean, it's going to be hard because people are going to be going, oh, okay, well, Tobias Harris, maybe he was just a product of Joel Embiid missing time, where if you look to trade him now, I think maybe that will be more so in the back of their minds rather in the front of their minds, and you'll be able to get a better price. Now, thank you guys. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really hope y'all got something from it. And like I said, if y'all really want to support the channel, if y'all want to literally get free money at the same time you're supporting the channel, go down to the description of the video, go click on that link. This is gonna be the only ad you hear on this channel and go sign up with promo code flock. It will help us out a ton.